The last what? part fight party I had here was for um, Wilder uh, Fury 2, I believe. Mm. And it was nothing but pizza and wings. That's it. That's I'll all it me. was. No, no, no. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't have pizza down there. Okay, I, what the fuck I'm, you sorry. Think you che- I'm sorry. Cheese <laughs> bread and cheese bread and wings. Yeah, you, had, you, had, you had grilled <laughs> cheese. Say, say, feel that bass. We gonna shake up this place. Say, pick up, pick up that bass. Y bienvenidos a todos los fanáticos del boxeo. Aquí David, Joey y Corling. Oh, wait a second. See, I got confused because Corling started talking to me in Spanish earlier, and um, I got all tripped up. I thought I thought I was back in, in the island. So, well, welcome all boxing fans. Here's Joey, Corling, and Dave for this episode of the Spartan Boxing Radio Show. And today we are talking about the recap of the fight that happened last weekend uh, between Canelo Alvarez and John Ryder. So interesting fight, maybe not as spectacular as uh, some people thought it was going to happen, including myself, but it was still a decent fight. So what do you guys think about that matchup? Uh, I'll make it quick. Make it quick. Um, I fell asleep waiting for <laughs> the fucking fight to start. And I woke up just as the third round was starting. Oh, that's right. Um, so, but from what I can, from what I gather from everybody else, it was just whatever happened in the third or fourth round was also happening in the first and second round. And Canelo was actually putting a, a good beating on him. And he almost made me a genius. I said, fifth round knockout. And he dropped them and he had him really hurt in the fifth. And somehow, some way, Ryder survived. Um, Ryder was hurt a little bit after that too, but then I don't know if it's if he gassed out. I don't know. I think the Canelo of old finishes that fight right there in the fifth round. Huh. And what he proved to me was he's not the same because John Ryder was winning the later rounds, 10, 11, 12, and maybe even one of them before that. So it kind of showed me that Maybe the gas tank that we never thought was there, maybe that's still an issue from time to time with Canelo. Or maybe he's on the back nine, and that's been brought up in the past too. He did what he had to do. To, there was no question he won the fight. But my thing is, the younger version of Canelo would have ended that fight. And Canelo's not doing that. He didn't look good against Bivol. He didn't look great against an old washed up Golovkin and he kind of let John Ryder off the hook. It is something he never used to do. Do you think he let him off the hook to give uh, the people of Guadalajara a show? No. no. Do, you th- do you think he carried him through that round? No. Um, I think he was losing rounds late. I think Ryder said... Well, on the fifth Ryder specifically. On the fifth think- round specifically. Do you think he let him off the hook purposely or, or was it Ryder doing um, you know, surviving I think, but I think Canelo wanted to give the the fans, the hometown crowd, a spectacular knockout, and he didn't deliver it. He almost did. Like I said, he he would have made me look great. I picked five. But so, so do you guys think that that was due to Canelo's uh, age and and his ring age at this point? Is is he going downhill in his career? Or were there things that John Ryder did to prevent Canelo from finishing him off? Or maybe a combination. Let me let me say this. John uh-huh. Ryder was tough. He was tough. Like, when did he then he fight with a broken nose? Yeah. Like his nose was broken pretty much all throughout the fight. And he was there. He stayed up. He stayed upright. He was doing some good stuff in there. Um, John Ryder showed some real good stamina. But right. Um, he also moves well. He moved, he, and he then he used he used his feet to get into position, and he started punching back. And he was right. Canelo was very hittable. That was the yeah. other that was the other thing I noticed. It, but see, let me let me tell you though, I don't know if it's kind of hard to attribute it just to you know Canelo's on the back nine, right? Wasn't that fight outside? Then they say it was like ninety degrees and muggy, and 
or what the altitude it was up in the mountains or something like that. I mean, it's a lot of factors. That whoa, play whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's from there? Hey, no, you're right. You're right. And, and where's where's Ryder from? Doesn't he train in San Diego, though? I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. It could be a lot of reasons. But if you're asking me personally, and it's so funny that we were talking about this the last time, is Canelo on the downside of his career? Is he on this? I mean, Canelo is what? Isn't he 60-something fights in his career? Pro since he was 15 years old? Um, and He's, he's fought, had about 64 fights, I think. Yeah, yeah. And he's fought the, the who's who of boxing in this current landscape, right? And, you know, even though we're still asking him to do more and doing all that, I mean, like, you know, from – Cotto to Liam Smith to Floyd Mayweather to Austin Trout to Eris Lady Lards. It's a lot of fights under his belt, and it's a lot of names under his belt, a lot of different styles. Um, and then, you know, moving up to 175 and playing with his weight, doing all this, it's a lot of things to consider when you're talking about Canelo. Something um, you something you you mentioned during the week uh, mm-hmm. in, in the Facebook group. Um, mm-hmm. all, there's a lot of names. There's a lot of what-ifs attached to those names. Mm-hmm. A lot. There's a, a lot of but-if but if yeah but yeah, if. yeah but and, but i mean even still just to go back to answer david's question it's a lot of fights under his belt just a lot of years a lot of wear and tear and maybe just maybe he doesn't train as hungry as he did when he was on the come up when he was at 154 when he was trying to make a name for himself canelo got a lot of stuff going on a lot of endorsements i mean we kind of spoke about this um you know, the, the huge contract with the zone that he signed and all that. This is the money man. This is the face. This is, this is the guy. So um, I'm not going to be too hard on him. John Ryder was tough. Um, Canelo's fought pretty much everybody. Maybe not that we want him to face, but he's faced a lot of people. Um, it'll be interesting to see where he goes from here, though. Here's what I have to say about. I, I got to ask you something, what, too, David. But go ahead. What I thought about what was going on here. I think it was a combination of things. I think that I don't think that Canelo was up for this fight as he was for his last fight with Golovkin. I didn't see the same um, energy, the same movement. He looked more like his last fight with uh, Bevel um, than his fight with with, uh, Golovkin. And I thought his fight against Golovkin was very uninspired. I, I think, well, I disagree. I think he w- he showed a lot of move, a lot more movement, a lot more torso and hip movement in that fight because he need he knew he needed to do it. So he, I think he came in in much better shape for that fight. Um, so I hear I hear some fans and some other boxers online saying that he hasn't looked good in the last five fights. I don't agree with that. I think he did look good against Golovkin in his last fight, regardless of whether Golovkin was 40 or 30 or 50 or whatever the hell he was. He's, I think physically, if you go back and look at the fight, you see what I mean. Um, Much more activity from Canelo for that fight than in this fight. I also think that Ryder really had a a, a very good counter. He had a great counter uh, left and an uppercut and was surprising Canelo and, and Canelo was really had some re- had to get some respect he 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 right. had to you know he couldn't just walk in like he did with i don't know con or or Danny well, Jacob. oh you talking about yeah gotcha. so gotcha. so he um he did get some shots landed on him, on him that made him think twice before just walking in so it was a more technical fight than maybe what it seemed but Ryder really had great timing. He was countering him with some fantastic shots, some sneaky shots throughout the beginning and middle of the fight. And he was tough. He was a tough guy, uh, strong. Um, So I think it was maybe a combination of things that made the fight look the way it looked. I still enjoyed it. I still enjoyed that fight. And I enjoyed, I I like watching this kind of matchup. Maybe it's not as spectacular as other fights, but you know it certainly wasn't Pacquiao versus Claudio, which was basically Pacquiao hitting a punching bag for most of the fight. Um, but it was what it was. Do I think that Canelo's on the downhill? 
maybe a little bit, but I wouldn't put too much stock into that. He's just what 32 right now. So yeah, but it's the tread on the tires at this point. A lot of fights. fights. A lot of fights. Well, a lot of fights, true, because he started young, but have they been a lot of hard fights? So this I'll some ask of you them this, have been. Because this is this is kind of what I I was it's like, not like he's gotten beat up in his fights either. So we have to take that into account. Has he gotten to a point where he's too comfortable? He's playing golf. His all his focus is not boxing anymore. It isn't. He's got the same team, and he'll come out of a fight, let's say, like against Bivol, where he thinks he won the first five rounds. Is he surrounded by the the yes men type? And he's he doesn't think he's wrong, and this maybe that's why he goes into a fight against Ryder, and and maybe he doesn't look like he took it serious enough. Is maybe, he, maybe is he, is he is he at that level where you know what? No one's gonna no one's gonna question him. No one's gonna say no to Canelo. Right. His team, it's the same team. You but know, then again, done- but then again, that was Floyd's case too. I mean, Floyd pretty much had the same team. Floyd pretty much. Yeah, had enough money to retire 18 times if he wanted to. And he still came out and fight. And, you know, he fought the way he fought. And that's it. And not all his fights were spectacular. Uh, He dominated in a lot of his fights. The last few years were, you know. But then then again, his opposition wasn't. All of the fun was the pre-fight hype. His opposition. The fights weren't good. You know, know question marks, too. It's actually funny that y'all brought up Floyd, and let me just go ahead and put this in here. You it's love that, that don't you? Well, the the reason I want to say that is because Floyd started being relatively inactive toward the end of his career. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one thing that actually preserved his body when he was in his late 30s, you know, mid-30s, right? You know, everybody knows that Floyd has brittle hands. So he couldn't fight, you know, three and four times a year and all of that. Now, Canelo, not making any excuses for him, but... Didn't he come off a knee surgery? Didn't he come off? No, it was a hand surgery. But he had a knee surgery also because I do remember him wearing a knee sleeve as well. Mm -hmm. Right? He's a little bit things. He had a knee surgery a couple of years ago. Right. But it was like before the second Golovkin fight. So we're talking, that's what, 2018. That's five years ago. But I mean, even still, though, we're talking about just these little things just chiseling away at him. Right. Yeah. Well, guess what? Same as it used to be. His, and, so surgery, his surgery five years ago, he was 27. Not only yeah, that, he would but go the, back and play football. The Are surgery, the surgery wasn't football. for anything that was wrong with his knee. He just had a cyst there that had to be removed. Or he had to get it cleaned out or whatever. But even yeah. still, maybe, maybe he needs to kind of go that Floyd Mayweather route, preserve his body, maybe fight one time a year, you know, make it a big fight, maybe do it on Cinco de Mayo or maybe on Mexican Independence weekend. Just the one fight. Maybe take off a year and a half and then fight two fights. Just do it like that. Keep the public demand up and, you know, just slow it down a little bit. Just a little bit. Just to preserve his body. No. No. Floyd's Floyd's mystique. Not when you hold four belts. No. Floyd's mystique was that he didn't, he didn't, he couldn't lose. Period. So he he could afford to wait. The whole year and just fight once Floyd, a year. Floyd didn't care and about make a belts. huge and make a huge thing about it. He didn't Canola, care about the belts. Canola has already lost. Well, sometimes he did, and sometimes he did. It depends on who he wanted to fight. The sometimes Floyd. he cared about the belts, and sometimes he didn't. But Floyd, for the most part, he wasn't undisputed. He wasn't going to say, "I'll take a year and a half off. I'm going to hold all this hostage." Somebody else already does that one weight division lower. So we don't need that in two weight divisions. Mm. I got you. I got you. I mean, I understand. I really do understand. But I'm just saying, like, if we're talking about he's on the back nine, it could be a lot of factors. It could be the opponent. It could be his body breaking down. It could be just, you know, ringing, you know, whatever. But maybe. I'm just saying that could be an option. You know? like, I mean, yeah, but I have I, another question. I just wouldn't put as much stock into him being over the hill because I, he's he's young. He's young. Um, okay. And he's he has many fights, and he's right. making a lot of money, and I'm sure he's very comfortable. But he seems to enjoy what he does, right? Um, maybe the opposition had a factor in it, uh, you know. Maybe, I, maybe fighters are human, huh? Maybe trained to make weight 
and just to be in shape rather than training for the right. specific opponent of John Ryder because John Ryder seemed way more prepared. Canelo just seemed more talented. Ryder looked like he got up for it because Ryder has a bunch of losses. You know, mm-hmm. right. he has losses to guys that Canelo has beaten, like Billy Joe right. Saunders and a few others. Right. So you would, it, it does seem like Ryder came, he, like he rose to the occasion. For Canelo. Yes, he could. He like he trained for Canelo. And Canelo kind of, you know, was just there to make weight, you know, flash off some stuff for his fans. And then what would you it. guys, what would you guys do next if you were Canelo? Well, if I was him, or speaking from you, a if you were him, what would you do? Take a year off. <laughs> Very Charlo of you to say there, that, David. No, 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 that's two years. Sorry. <laughs> If you're going to be a Charlie, you got to take two years off, not one. Well, Mel's coming up in a year, too. Here's a plus last, last, last May. Yes, it's that will take up a whole episode. Mm-hmm. What would you do? Calm down, calm down. David, what would you do if you were Canelo? It's not a bad idea to take some time off at his stage. It's It, it, it does maybe seem like he's, uh, you know, I don't think he's over the hill. I don't think he's completely I'm not that. done. I think maybe he could use a rest, but then again, he got a rest during the pandemic too. So, I mean, he he only has one stat year. I mean, listen, it could be that, and this happens to fighters. It could be that he did already peak and and maybe starting to go downhill. A lot of fighters, their, their peak can be different stages of their life. If you were Canelo, what would you do? Um, I don't think I would go to Bevo. I would think I would knock off Benavides at this point if that's would, what everybody I, wants. Um, I said it even before the Ryder fight. First of all, I mean Charlo's not available, so he, did, he, he doesn't. Get he doesn't. Out. He's going to call all the shots, whether he lost to Bibble the first time or not. He's sure. going to call the shots. He's not going to fight him for one at one sixty eight because Canelo knows he'll probably lose again. I don't think that weight will affect Bibble. I don't. I don't think he will. Um, he looks like he's always in shape and he's always serious about okay. what he's doing so oh. and for him he doesn't think 175 is worth it for what what does he gain besides money if he wants if he wants money he wants his take his four belts you're talking about canelo right yeah so yeah. but canelo if, if, wants him at, some, at 175 no he, continue, Bibble, he but, continues to say Bibble, he wants him at 175 Bibble does it so Bibble can turn around and say you know what i'm not going to waste my time then Canelo is going to be forced to go after someone like Benavides. And before the Ryder fight, I said, Canelo better get Benavides now before he gets his, his feet under him a little more. You know, if he starts to pick up the competition and gets a little better and he gets a little more polished, Canelo better get him now. Hmm. Just, either go, either go for Benavides or take a rest and and wait for. Let me jump in. Rest. You can, you can do both, right? Take the rest, fight Benavides next year. Don't fight anyone for the rest of the year. Take Benavides next year, single the mile weekend, and then you'll be good. Number one, you have the chance, because we said this in the last podcast. We were like, all right, if this fight happens, Benavides and Canelo within the next year, it's going to be huge. So it's going to do numbers either way, right? I think this does almost two million. Like what, literally, what what date but, does more views? Cinco de Mayo or Mexican Independence Day? Cinco de Mayo. It is. It's. I think it's Cinco. Maybe in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. Cinco de Mayo is not that important in Mexico. Well, according to Corling, the other seven million eight hundred trillion territories don't even matter. Not on that oh. app. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> Well, who, who knows? It may not be on that app. Like, look, 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 everybody in the country wants to go out and have tacos and Mexican food on Cinco de Mayo weekend, right? Or it do may they, be they a don't joint. do that in September. They it don't may, care it, about it. They don't even know. These joint. people don't even know about it. You're talking about just boxing fans know those Mexican dates. The rest of the it, country don't give a shit. It's a, it's a little bit different when you live where I live. But yeah, you're, you're right for the most part. But... Um... Yeah, I mean, if it and makes... I, you know what? I think Canelo, the reason Canelo will not do the fight with Bivol at 168, the main reason, because he knows he still wants to make that fight really meaningful with Benavides eventually. And he would need the four belts to do that. Oh. 
And it would still be big, but it would be even bigger if it's for four belts. Canelo's not dumb. You know, he's not, he doesn't have a dumb team. So he knows I'm not going to lessen that fight by losing to a guy who I already lost to, which is, you know, this would be stupid. I'd rather fight him again at 175 and it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. I tried. And he thinks he'll get this like, like moral victory for trying twice or whatever. Good for you, whatever. But I think his best move is to go get Benavidez now. Now, if that means like what you said, take a break and come back next May and fight him, then do that. Right. Because I think personally that Bivol should tell him to go fuck himself. It seems to me that try to get Benavidez a better beef. He doesn't want to let go. A meaningful fight for himself. He doesn't want to let go of those Mexican dates because he's traditionally been fighting Cinco de Mayo and September. So um, what for, are you saying? September. I think, I think he's gonna fight. In the September. Love Kim Four. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't. Like, the Love Kim Four in September. He's right. He's running out of these these type of opponents. So like, what UK guy is Eddie Hearn gonna wheel out there to what Rocky Fielding too? Is this what we're gonna do? You know, just so we can keep the toolbox sharp, and then that's it. Rocky mm-hmm. Fielding in Mexico. Let's go run it. Now, you know, I think you guys are right. He should take the rest of the year off so we don't have to talk about him anymore. It'd be great. <laughs> it's fantastic. Well, but but the reality is is that chances are he will fight. I, I think he will. I think he's going to go and, and look for whatever opponent it is. It's been, it'll be interesting to see who he tries to make the fight with. Um, I don't think it's going to be just a, a gimme for him to secure a Benavides for September because we all know who's Benavides advisor and we know how difficult it is to get fights done with with Heyman well it, ha- it happened so, for plant it happened for plant relatively quick easy well maybe 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 somebody's not ready to cash David out yet exactly would, would, would plant he didn't care he was exactly. expendable. He was expendable. Are there right. any rematches other than Golovkin and Bevel that Canelo may be able to make? No, but what if he tries to finally, you know, pull the card on Andrade? No, that that's a hell no. You remember, you are a horrible fighter. Yeah, oh no, no, know. I remember all that, but it's yeah. it's a way I remember that. I remember it's that. It's a way to I don't think Andrade can hurt him. Maybe I can outbox him. Andrade's awkward, but it's also it's it's not a fight where I don't think Canelo will take a lot of damage and still be able to make the Benavides fight next May. It's the, it's the a, it's another fight to take other than look it, Everyone's going to say either he's going to fight Bivol or he's going to fight Benavides. No, that's another option. Well, we got to we got to think about 168, right? See, this is this is where you got to check all the boxes, right? Eddie Hearn, check. 168, check. Straight up and down UK fighters, check. And then who's the UK fighter that had a fairly decent win in and around his weight class? Most recently is Liam Smith. Liam Smith is the rematch to go ahead and take again because he just beat Chris Eubank. There you go. Liam Smith in September. Um, I'm telling you right now, I am skipping that podcast. I ain't doing that fight. <laughs> you go skip the podcast. Let, let me run something by you I'll guys. sit that one out. I mean, it's football season. I'll be watching. I'll right, be watching right. How, how far-fetched would it be? How far-fetched would it be? Considering how a fighter like Floyd Mayweather loves huge fights hold on loves to make that you know 500 million dollar hit that 500 million dollar mark in one fight how far fetched would it be for floyd to agree to a 160 fight with canelo a rematch with canelo at 160 considering somebody like Sugar Ray Leonard took a took a fight with um with uh Hagler at 160 late in his career. Do you do you think that a fight like that, let's just say hypothetically that it was agreed to, do you think a fight like that would break pay-per-view records? Yep. It would. 
I think it would. I think it would be massive at this point, even bigger than 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 Floyd Pacquiao at this point. Is it an exhibition? <laughs> no, let's call it a real fight then, because then Canelo there's a hundred and thirty seven percent chance that it doesn't happen. Right. It, but, it can. It can. But I wouldn't it wouldn't out. it be bold of of Floyd to come back for that fight? Yeah, but Floyd's not bold. He wants to fight. But but, but, Floyd, Chinese, like, but Floyd likes teenage money. MMA fighters. He doesn't want to fight a real fight. Floyd has an ego and he likes money and he likes his zero. He likes his zero. And do you he think it's, do you think it's not a winnable fight for Floyd at this stage? Yep. He he would win. <laughs> I I I agree. I agree he would. I, I'm with Corley on this one. I think that it's a it's a medium risk with a huge reward for Floyd if he went came back just for this fight. Yeah. It, and if he I'm, could and if he could bring Canelo down to the 160 or even lower than that, it yeah. would be a huge advantage for him. That would be a to, dr- to drain Canelo, and and I think Canelo would buy into it. I think Canelo would do it just for it, the payday. It would show me that Canelo is every bit the money hungry hoe, a whore <laughs> that I thought he might be, <laughs> but then he talked about legacy so much. If he if he were able to get duped into that fight, which I think he could win, because I we haven't he, seen he we could. haven't seen. Look, Floyd has fought like one exhibition a year. Some of them are three rounders. I mean, he's really, really inactive. And he, the, the people that he's fighting are, you know, they're just guys that are happy to, to get to get a payday to show up in a ring with him. They're not real fighters. So Canelo, you know, for everything you just said, he's still young. He's not that maybe that far down on the de- on the backside of his career. I I think, you know what? You want to see someone get up for a fight? Canelo will get up for that fight. I for one would buy it. And you know, and you know me, I don't buy fights. I would buy it. I would watch it. I'm not even buying the next fight we're about to talk about. <laughs> oh God. well, so you say Benavides, Joey, you say uh Corlin, you say, say he, he I, needs I'm off. Yeah, I'm saying he should Fine. get Benavides now. And I'm saying time off then Benavides. And I'm saying I would just love it. If suddenly out of nowhere we had a mega, mega, huge fight um, to quench, uh, well, make Floyd's that the, make that the title of the podcast, and then we started this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody starts like, "Oh, hey, they, they were talking about Floyd and Canelo again." Because I don't think I don't think a Pacquiao, for example, is w- would be viable. He's too small. But Floyd at 155, 157, even up to 160 oh. would still be viable at his age. So I, you can only hope. Right. We'll see where he goes next. We'll see if he decides to take the time off or if he decides to take on a big challenge. He does need a, a big fight at this point after coming off of a writer fight, you know, the progression of things usually you have a tough fight which he had with uh with uh, Golovkin followed by a you know showcase fight for his hometown people and now if you are the cash cow if you are the a side if you are the star the face of boxing then you need to have that big fight coming next if not then then it's time to think about giving that title to somebody else Maybe Gervonta Davis. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Which I don't think he is right now. Currently, the face of boxing. It's coming. But it, it it's may happen. It may happen if if he fights the guys that are out there. So, mm. so tell us what you think in the comments about who you think Canelo will fight next. And now we're going to talk about the up. Coming fight, a fight between another undisputed champion. Have my mic off, sorry. Between the uh, um, here, here's what I know: the Olympic champion Vasily Grandpachenko Lomachenko, General Generalchenko, Generalchenko, General. and Devin 
What's Devin's nickname? The Dream. The Dream the Haney. Dream. That's a that's a great nickname for that's a fighter. Actually, I think I think it's cool. I like um, it. So so Corling talked for this fight for years and complained about the franchise belt and all that stuff. Back when Haney really had nothing to offer. You Lomachenko, Lomachenko wanted to unify. He had the WBC title and they he dropped right. it so he can get the other. Well, he didn't drop it. They elevated him. He accepted it, which Haney had no problem accepting also. So shut the fuck up. And no, now no, no, no. and then he went to fight. Lom, uh, he went to fight Tiafimo three years ago when Haney had nothing to offer. So now all of a sudden Haney's talking a lot, talking a lot. But I think all his talk is making you nervous because oh. It sounds like he's trying. Yeah, no, because he was going to kill Loma, and now you now you're real worried about this fight. So stop lying. Nah, 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 nah. It's not. It's not the talk that's making me nervous. It's the styles that's making me nervous. I don't really. I don't buy into the talk. Like, yeah, okay, talk that talk. I like that. Right. It's not the talk. It's not how brash somebody is. It's not. Yeah, but in the past, I'm you've you've said, you've said someone's that talking too much. They're trying to talk themselves into believing what they're. Depends saying. on who. Depends on who they are. If it's right. Why, why not him? Nah, because he just seems like he's a serious boxer, right? He uh he has the self belief. He has the team behind him. There's no doubt in my mind that he takes boxing seriously. This ain't no photo op with the makeup guy going to Eddie Reynoso's gym with a tripod and a selfie stick and doing some drills and leave. No, this dude is putting in the work. I can see it. I can see that he's getting stronger. His body is starting to change. And all of the stuff that he says is in line with boxing, right? My In the Blood, Sweat, and Tears episode, he says, I want to become a throwback fighter, a man's man, somebody with integrity. You know, things like that. When you talk like that, I'm like, okay. And there's no doubt in my mind that he's telling the truth. And I believe him. I know that he's taking <laughs> this fight seriously, just like he took the Cambosos fight seriously, just like Gamboa, just like Benares, all of these fights. And you see progression also. Like, let me tell you, when he fought Cambosos, he fought he beat Cambosos in two different types of ways. Two different ways. Two different ways. Beat him soundly both times. You know, that's it. This is the guy who's taking Is that is that his best win? Uh, to be honest with you, I think his best win is Lenares because that's when he showed the most. Because we always talk about adversity, right? Trial by fire. And he did get rocked in that fight. He came back, fought, won easily, in my opinion. He dogged Lenares out. So I think Lenares... Didn't, didn't, didn't Loma do that too? That Loma got dropped? Chico, and, Chico got dropped. And... But hold on. Now, the experience edge in everything you have to give it to Chanko, right? You got to give it to him. You just have to give it to him. What, know, about, in, what about in skills? Who has the edge? You, you can say it. No. The, phys- the you physical can advantages are clearly no, handled. I think height, the length. Listen, He's start the start your guy. start your answer with to be honest, and then we'll we'll go ahead and believe it. I don't believe anything he says after that. <laughs> to be 100 percent dishonest, right? No, to, to be honest, the skills. I think that each possesses a skill that each other doesn't have, right? So I can say, based on what I've seen, the skills are even. Now, as far as using them, using a jab, using this, of course, Dev is going to be better than Shinko in that because he has those physical gifts to work with, and he's worked with them his whole time throughout boxing, you know, whatever, in the weight class that he's in. Chinko has a different set of skills. He has the footwork and the feints and all of that. But he's had to fight like that because of his stature, his side. So I can't say that Dev can just easily go in there and do what Chinko does. No, because he hasn't fought like that for life. And I can't see Chinko flexing the jab, using length and distance because he gets peppered to death by longer fighting. So I'll say skill-wise. I'm going to say that both are even. I really am. I'm going to go out on my limb, and I'm going to say that both are even. And that now, the physical advantages would put Haney over the top? No. No. I think the mental advantages will put Haney over the top. And I'm going to tell you why. Chenko seems a little bit worried. Ever since that confrontation that they had when you know Haney stepped in the ring, was it after a Chenko beat, what was it, Nakatani? Or was it Richard Coleman? 
And uh, he was like, oh, you, you're heavyweight. <laughs> Seems like he's worried about a little bit. Worried about that size. Worried about that length. That's what I'm talking about. Um, now, it's hard for me to believe that Chinko was actually worried about anyone. But why would he even say that, though? Why? You know, it Chinko doesn't because seem like his sense of humor doesn't really translate to us. <laughs> maybe that's why. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But let me let me tell you why I'm worried about this fight, bro. And I'm just gonna let you know. I think I insult him by calling him heavyweight. Yes. All right, by heavyweight. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Now, but look, I'm gonna tell you why I'm worried, and this is why I say that I'm very worried about this fight. If Devin goes in there and he thinks that he's just gonna be able to flex a jab, and then when Chinko gets in on him inside. He's just going to clinch. That's the wrong fight to fight. That's the one. Because I don't know if you've seen Shenko in clinches. He's going to get an arm free. He gets skinny. Mm -hmm. He gets out of there. And he's going to fight on the inside. He's going to try and get both hands free. And he's using feet. He's wiggling free. He's doing all that. And I think that Shenko has a wrestling background, right? So where he's sitting here, he's using his torso. He's using leverage to get the hell out of there. That's the one thing that I'm worried about. I don't think that Dan, with the way that he fights, as young as he is, not fully developed, not fully grown into his body yet, I don't think that he possesses that strength yet and the technique yet to just go in there and grown man shinko around, jab him, and grab him, push him. I don't think it's going to be that easy. So if he's going to try and employ those tactics, I think that's the wrong thing to do. Did you notice how much they were working on strength training in, in camp on those videos, how much oh, yeah. they were working on legs, leg power and, yeah. and strength. I think that they they realized that too in the camp and they, they're really working hard on him mm -hmm. um, to strength, strengthen his core and his legs. And I think you're right in that, that respect. But, you know, I, I think that he'll be strong enough to handle that insight fighting. Um, what I what what maybe maybe not me. win the exchanges, but be able to. But it's not, it's not really, Look, it's yeah. not really just a raw strength thing, though. I can't just attribute it to raw strength. It's knowing how to move when you're in. Chenko is he knows how to move in close quarters, so it's not really just raw strength to where it's like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna grab you and then that's it. You're not gonna be able to move around. Like, no. Chaco finds space. He gets skinny, and he's strong enough. To be honest with you, I think Chaco's very you, strong. You know what? You know what he he does too. And um, mm -hmm. you know when you're watching like Instagram or Facebook, and <clears throat> they'll have those top ranked promo videos because he's fighting in two weeks, so they show all these highlights for Chenko or for Haney or for whoever's fighting, right? So mm -hmm. I saw one with with Chenko, and it's exactly what you're talking about: people trying to clinch. And he not only is he able to get skinny and uses his feet and his legs and leverage and, and able to slip out of there, but he slips out in a position to punch. Right. So while someone's trying to grab him, he's getting out and he's coming over the top with back. Right. Immediately. 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 He's coming out with an angle to hit. Right. That's something Floyd right. used to do very well, too, when he yeah, got into clinches. He did. He did. But Floyd, but I, see, I'm going to tell you with Floyd, though, Floyd will lay there. And let you beat on him and grab him and do all this. Chico's not even letting you do that. He's no. not wasting any time. He's getting out that clinch immediately and he's trying to dole out some punishment. I just, that's the only place where I'm really, really worried. It's not going to be no jab, grab, thing. I know everybody's kind of thinking that, but oh, he's bigger. No, nah, it's a lot more than that. It's way more. Do you think Devin? with his jab and movement can prevent Chanko from getting inside throughout the whole fight, because that would be the easiest way to win this fight for Devin Haney. That would be a walk in the park to just jab him to hell and turn him, you know, mm -hmm. every jab, turn him and move and, and get out of the way and prevent him from coming in. Do you think that, you know, and landing some hard shots for respect too? do you think that, that would happen in this fight? Or do you think we're going to see a point where Lomachenko invariably will get inside and will rough him up and will make this a, a harder fight than Devin can handle? That Jerry, question you. plays exactly into how I would predict the fight to go. And the answer... Oh, give us your prediction. 
Joey? The answer is no, he won't be able to do it all fight. Mm. What happens with, and this is starting to be a trend with Chanko, and it was Jermaine Ortiz and it was Tia Fimo, and he he's like he's like an old computer. Everything works, but he's like Windows 98. It takes a long time to warm up, then the pages start freezing up. He he gets off to slow starts now. He yep. did with Tia Fimo, he did with in his last fight with Jermaine Ortiz. He, he gets off to a slow start, and he was able to pick it up with Ortiz. He waited too long with Tiafimo. Uh, maybe he respected him too much. I think Tiafimo has more power than you know maybe he expected or maybe he anticipated too much power. He starts slow now, and that never used to be the case. So I think while he's doing that, Haney's going to use – his brains and his feet and his range and his length to get ahead and get ahead on rounds. And he, it might go very similar to how the Tia female fight went the bigger guy using his physical attributes to win a good chunk of rounds in the beginning. And then Loma trying to come on later on and it probably not being enough. So I'm going to take Haney by decision. And I'm going to think that the, 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 the pace and the tone of the fight will be very similar to how the Tia Fimo fight played out with Lomachenko. Do you think following this computer analogy, you think that the hard drive is, is spinning up slowly, but it's not corrupted yet in Lomachenko. Right, right. right. It's like, it's it taking works. time to get up to it's speed just, to know, read data, but the data to load, is to load the web page. It's just like you're waiting there. It's like dial up at this point with AOL. <laughs> Well, maybe you, not, maybe not that slow, but but you know, it takes him time to start computing yeah. the data into what the guy in front of him is doing. So you have Let's Haney see. by decision, and I got and Haney by decision. Here's what I'm going to say, and I'm going to. And I, gonna I, 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 it could be like I said, <clears throat> like it, with the fight with um, Tiafimo, I think I had it eight four for for Tiafimo. I had it seven five. Yeah, it could be anywhere around there, but but a Haney Haney will win, and but I think. Loma will still show something. I'm and... gonna give I'm gonna give you my prediction, and I'm gonna say uh, something, and I'm gonna leave the, the last word to Corling, because mm. uh, okay, Corling has had the most to say about this fight than us, too. And so, I love that these fights are happening. I love that we got a Lomachenko versus Lopez. I love that we got a Lopez versus Cambosos and a Haney versus Cambosos and that we're getting this fight also. This is a top-level elite fighter fight. Even, even if the matchup it has an age gap, I, think, I, I still think that Lomachenko is viable. Um, maybe he's slowing down a little bit because of his age and the distractions that he's had to go, go through, you know, being a general and all that fighting for his country. Um, whether some agree with that or not, regardless. Um, he has like 200 kills, Corley. But <laughs> you're counting. But this like, is like, like 198. Yeah, stylistically, like this is a very, very, very interesting fight. You have the... Lomachenko, skill, skilled, skilled pressure fighter. Because to me, he's a pressure fighter. His yeah. his game is to pressure his fighter into submission. He he's not a hugely powerful but for, for guy, but he punches a lot. When he gets going, he punches a lot. He lets his hands go and angles and until he makes his fighter quit or knocks him out. Um, he showed that with uh, several fighters in the past. Um, where he's made several fighters quit. Um, Nomaschenko. That's where he got his nickname, Nomaschenko. General Nomaschenko. And then you have a Devin Haney who has a lot of skills, not too tested, but has a couple of wins under his belt that have shown what kind of talent he has. And he is growing into his body. He is growing into his man body as a boxer, and he may be larger than what we think come fight night. 
And it may look like it's David versus Goliath in there. Um, whether he can maintain Lomachenko at, at bay, it depends on if Lomachenko hits an age wall suddenly. Hmm. If Lomachenko can't get himself going, if the hard drive has issues with the little motor inside and can't spin up, then we're not going to get proper data from him. And I think that in that case, he can beat Lomachenko easy with the jab and with movement. What worries me is what Corling said, the insight fight. If Lomachenko can get himself inside and start roughing, if, if Lomachenko, and Lomachenko is not just skilled, he is really smart. He has a, a very, very good grasp of ring, not just his IQ, but psychology in the ring. He knows how to break down his fighter mentally in there. Generalship. So <laughs> the general <laughs> is Devin Haney ready physically? I think he will be. Is he mentally ready? That is the bigger question. If he starts getting roughed up in there, if he starts catching elbows and starts getting hit just a little bit below, is he going to break down mentally? Is he going to start complaining to the referee and not focus on what he's doing and get out of his game? That can hurt him. So in that respect, it's to me, it's two different fights here. And it's going to depend on how it starts. And, and we will see in the first four rounds which way it's going to go for me. Um, tentatively, I'll pick Devin Haney to win by decision. Um, I kind of expect Lomachenko to be to get old in this fight. Hmm. So, <laughs> it, But that's great. That's great because that's how these fights go sometimes yeah. so it's not, it's not completely past its expiration date but it, no but it, it, it would be it a, might it might expire on may 20th it would be a bona fide passing of the torch fight if that's what happens yep so respect for for devin haney to beat a guy like lomachenko if he beats him that way and even if lomachenko looks old he deserves all the credit for making him look old if that's what happens Otherwise, if it turns into a hard, dirty fight, um, mm. it may be a bad night for Devin Haney. And we'll see. I mean, this is this is what's great about this fight. It, it, it's very hard to to predict. After all these big supposed fights, and I'm going to let you go right now, Corlin, but the, the, the plant Benavides and then Tank and Garcia and Canelo, this is the one, literally, with the most meat on the bone. Mm -hmm. Right. And it it I think it's starting to get a little buzz, but it it really had nothing. But it's right. starting to get a little buzz. And maybe that's because Haney's talking and Loma's doing no talking. But it's it's going to wind up being the best out of all of them because yep. like plant kind of like faded and Ryan Garcia was, you know, an Instagram star and that's about it. And, you know, maybe if you look at it the way I was looking at it, or maybe the way a lot of people looked at it was that Canelo started to fade a little bit. This might be, especially like what David said, if if Lomachenko doesn't get old overnight and there is a lot of inside fighting and and he and he can really test Evan Haney, this might be the best fight of the year. And whoever loses, if that's what happens and it works out that way, and Devin loses. He really didn't lo lose in my eyes because you'll have a rematch. If it's a hard, yeah, close yeah. fight, there'll be a rematch for this fight. Um, so we'll get to see if he can make adjustments or not. Um, we'll get to see his, you know, his um, mental fortitude in this fight, whether he wins or loses. We'll get to see it. It'll be from full display. And we'll get we'll get to see if Lomachenko has anything left. If it's a routing and and Devin Haney routes him, then there's no need for for a rematch. And good for Haney for taking that torch and running with it. And hopefully he can then go move on to a short. I, I, if that's the case, I hope Stevenson Haney, or I Tank Davis. Haney, I hope Haney makes him look old instead of just watching the fight and thinking like Loma got old in a ring and it wasn't because of Haney. If you're gonna pass the torch like that take it you know what i mean take it and run with it take it i agree and run with it
Right. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Laker fan. Go ahead. Oh. Yes, sir. Well, the thing is, Joey, I have to go ahead and steal, you know, what you said. I was very, very hard on the Ryan Garcia and Tank fight because it meant nothing. Absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. The real boxing fans, it meant nothing. This fight right here means absolutely everything. This fight, I can argue, is between the two best lightweights out there. There's no catch weights, no rehydration clauses, nothing. This is and all and all the belts. Fight. Exactly, all the belts, legitimate belts, no Reggie belts, no whatever. We can throw the email belt in there too. It's for that belt also, right? <laughs> this fight is for everything. The, belt, the belt's for coming full circle now. It's great, but it really does. And the only thing that's disheartening about this fight for me is that it deserves more traction. And this fight deserves more flow than Ryan Garcia and Tanker. Any other fight that's happened this year, this first half of the year coming up. So let me go ahead and say that. Hats off to both guys. And it's nothing but respect for this matchup, for both guys taking this. Nothing but respect. Now, as far as a prediction, it's going to be very hard for Haney to just jab and move and keep Chanko out of there, right? Not for the whole fight. And another thing that I'm worried about, Haney likes to keep that left hand low. We always talk about fundamentals and, you yep. know, technicalities and all of that. And uh, Chanko's, uh, he's a southpaw. A left hand low. Here it comes. Palm. And here comes that right hook, right? So that's what I'm going to need Haney to, you know, go ahead and brush up. Now, if you look at other fighters in the past, they fought southpaws different. They put that high guard up. They sit there and they march forward and they do whatever. And he has to keep Chenko moving backwards, right? You don't want Chenko aggressive. You don't want him like that at all. Because if you're backing straight up, he's going to sit there and he's going to dart around, look at those angles, and then you're doomed. Look, I'm going to say this. If the fight is close, I don't like the political component, right? I have to say that. I got to go ahead and put that out there. Haney really has no affiliation to top rank, right? This is his last fight, right, with top rank. And I think that there was an article that came out and it said that Bob Arum told him not to be signed. So that's going to be something to look at also because we know how Bob Arum likes to – he loves him some Chico. He loves him to keep those belts on his side. And we have Shakur Stevenson who's coming up in the ranks, and he's already talked about that, right? He's already said, you know, my dream for – you know, whatever, this organization, for this company, it's Shakur Stevenson versus Vasil Lomachenko. We got to put that out there because that can matter. Now, if everything's on the up and up, everything is righteous, because you know how I love benevolence and righteousness, right? I'll have to say Devin Haney, and he's going to have to make this convincing, right? So Dev is going to have to, it's not just going to be a jab fist. And we already said that it can't be a clinch fist. He's going to have to hit him with some meaningful shit. So right hand has to be cocked and it has to come straight down the pipe. Um, Does he have enough to knock Chenko down or out? That's what I was going to say. Because check this out. Chenko has a tendency to, number one, get aggressive when he's down on the cards. Right? He's going to come in and he's going to come in and get that thing back. With Linares, that's how it happened. Straight down the pipe, right hand, boom. That was it. I think Shinko does. I mean, I'm sorry. I think Dev has enough. That was hurt. that was a flash, though. With it with was him. a great knockdown. Now it was flash, whatever you want to say, but that was a perfectly leveraged punch. Boom, right on the butt. It happened. It happened. It wasn't no feet tripping up, nothing like Cause that. Because Tia Tia Fimo has a lot of pop and did not hurt Lomachenko. It hurt him. Now, but another thing though. This is what Shenko has a tendency to do also. You were talking about starting slow, old computer. We're going to go ahead and dispel all of that old shit in a little bit. But um, the one thing... Wow, H- Haney called him old and slow three years ago. He did. And he did. That's, that's, what, that's what he can do. He's fighting the fight. No excuse. But, Haney, you're right. You're right. But check this out, though. Shenko has very good stamina, right? And a lot of these guys run out of gas. And then that's when Chinko comes up and he makes that, you know, that push and that heavy push. 
Jermaine Ortiz got gassed. He was boxing well, but he succumbed to the pressure. Even Teofimo Lopez was doing well. Then you started seeing Lomachenko, you know, come through. And I want to say that the rising tide at that fight, it was too little too late. But was Lomachenko, Haney's not going to run out of gas. He's too young to do so. And I'm just looking at him. He, nah. He's How old is he? 24. Right? Yeah, I think Teofimo was younger than him, by the way. He was younger than him. Probably by some months. Yeah, I believe. By like a year or something, yeah. There, there's no, but see, remember also now you have Tiafima Lopez, who's more of a power puncher, a little bit more explosive, athletic, you know, doing all that. So I can see him running out of gas a little bit easier than Dev Haney. So Dev's not going to run out of gas. He's not. He's not. So if you're employing that strategy of lateral movement, using legs, jabbing, using distance, then Haney has the gas tank to do so. So what I'm going to say, I'll say eight. Or decision with maybe a knock <laughs> in there in favor of Devin Haney. Let, let's go ahead and do that. But I will not be surprised if Lomachenko hits Haney with something on the inside or slips some shit in there, slips a right hook in there, slips maybe even a body shot in there. Because we have to think about that. Think about the making the weight component as well, right? And Haney has and then thin, thin, thin legs. 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 I have so one legs. one question. Go ahead, finish your point. But I just don't be surprised if that happens as well. But all in all, if everything's on the up and up, the way the natural progression of the natural order of things go, we got to say Haney by decision. Um, maybe not all the way a passing of the torch fight because the passing of the torch is like, shoot, we, you know, we talking about like Ali Holmes. Like that's a passing of the torch fight. You beat it out of him. I can't see Chinko getting beat like that, right? But I can see Dev winning, winning fairly comfortably, and then we just move on, and that's it. So, you done hedging everything you said? Because you said, right, <laughs> Haney this, Haney that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Come on. Yeah, right. Make right, a right. pick. Just like right. well, yesterday. What's, you could, what's your pick? I missed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Haney, 8-4 eight, eight, Haney. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 7-5 Haney, but I want to ask one thing before we Close. go. Um. Uh, well, I think he wins so many rounds early that, you know, it just seems a lot like the TFEMO fight where Chenko just comes on too late. The, the, all this extra um, power training, Haney, is kind of different. It's not what he normally has done in the past. Mm. Will that affect him? Nope. Nope. It, not negative. It can only be positive. Okay. For, David? For a, kid, well, for a kid who's 23, 24 years old, That'll only help. It gives him a different type of training. It gets him away from the monotony of things. And it gives him that extra bump in order, say he has to find something. Okay, he's going to find that wide base, the legs, the sturdiness. He'll be all right. What was the question again? Uh, All this extra, like, like power training that Haney's doing. doing. Could Could it affect him negatively? Yes, it can. It can affect him negatively. Especially with his stamina, if he's building muscle, that's what I think. Um, that's that's where he it, might run out it, of stamina. It, he may he may get relying out too end. much power. If he comes too big, and, and let's keep in mind he's he's gonna drain himself to make weight. He's having trouble making weight. Um, but if he's putting muscle mass and having to drain himself, it may show up in the in the latter part of the fight in the last three or four rounds. We may see it, and and that's when Lomachenko comes has a surge. He he better make sure he's up early like that. Like he better jump on on Lomachenko early because if that does happen, that's that's when like Lomachenko is going to make his push. Yeah. I've Which, just never seen the evidence of them in faith in fights. Never seen uh, it. I agree. We don't, have, we don't we don't have any because also think about it like this: Devin Haney's trained with everybody, like all of the who's who in boxing, all of the the Larry Wades and under snack and all of that. I can't just definitively say that he hasn't done this level of strength training before. Maybe he's putting more of an emphasis on it, but I can't definitively say that he's never done something or he's in 
incognito terra like i'm not i'm not gonna see that we I'm only sure. see we only see what we see in the media right. also <laughs> but they they seem to and those sources uh, are usually not reliable anyway. make an effort to show that he they were working on this they showed a lot of it um yeah. of he working on his legs and, right. and his core so you know which i think is smart to a certain degree um as you build a fighter but for a, a, a fight this big, if it's different than, than what they've been doing before, it may affect if them. If it's so. It, it may affect them. Um, what if what if Devin cannot land something meaningful on Lomachenko? Does that change the outlook of the fight, even if he's able to continue jabbing from the outside? Do you yep. think Lomachenko takes advantage of that and gets inside and beats him up? Well, yeah, because see, you have okay. to you have to think think about that Tiafimo fight. Tiafimo was landing counter right hands, right, straight down the pipe, mm -hmm. and then he was fainting with that right hand. And you see, Chenko kind of thinking about it. He had to reset a little bit. He didn't come in as you know aggressively as he did before, or as he would like. To. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's going to change the trajectory of the whole fight if he can't land anything or make Chenko think. That he's gonna like, you know, maybe sometimes a faint can do it and make you reset, and then Devin Haney can go ahead and he could be out of it. That's it. But I just don't. He he's gonna have to land some meaningful stuff. He's you not got, gonna. You gotta make somebody believe in that faint though, right? You gotta hit him with something first. You gotta you gotta hit him, or you. And then to, when you do faint, they're thinking. Right, right. So that's the thing. I can't. It, this fight isn't gonna be won with the left hand from Devin Haney. This is going to have to be a two-handed fight with legs, straight up. It's not going to be just a jab fist. It, it can be, but it mm -mm, no, I can't see that. I so Joe, that. Joey has it seven five. You have it eight four. I am not going to predict what the scores will be because that's just unpredictable, especially with the rash of bad uh, scores we've been getting. Yeah. Um, I, I still think that. Let me just say this. Haney will deserve the win. Whether he wins or not, well, we'll see. But I think he will deserve the win. How close it will be, I think it has the potential for him to make it wide. Hmm. I I do think. But Why are you watching a fight? Where I, I'm still going to be in Florida. <laughs> He's always big on venues, man. That's funny. Oh, no, I'm, I'm 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 actually throwing a fight party here. Oh, you are? No, no. I'm I'm gonna be in Florida till May 30th. But um so regardless of all this Carling gonna be at work watching it on rabbit ears. No, no, no. Regardless of who wins, if Lomachenko wins, <laughs> where does he go from here? Oh man. I would hang it up by done. What do you have to prove? You know, you know what? That's actually a good point, Joey. Because look, if he wins and retires, is to be honest with you, he won't. We talk about like what fight, what what did this, what win, what victory put him in the Hall of Fame. I think this is the one for Chico that definitively puts him in the Hall of Fame. Oh, no he's, argument. First he's time. already in the Hall of Fame. He's in there. I, you know, you know what? I completely understand. But how much more impressive would that look? It, it looked fantastic at that age. At that one thirty. So do you think he, that much younger than him? That much that with that much talent and with would, those physical be, advantages, yeah. right? Along with being a five star Joe, along with all of that, it it'll yeah. be absolutely crazy. The craziest resume in boxing that I've ever seen in my life. Ukrainian general slash undisputed champ. He killed one hundred ninety eight Russians, and he retired. Definitely. And he retired undisputed. Yeah. God the bears, did, did all that. So does he leave on the table a mega million fight with the tank, tank, or or even with or <laughs> e, or even with yeah, but Ryan, Ryan Garcia? Why not? Yeah. No, uh, you know what he could do. I, I would take the Ryan Garcia fight because I think it's simple for for Lomachenko. Yeah, the tank can, fight. Does, fight does how long does he have to wait to get the tank fight? <laughs> for how long do you have to wait for that? 
because no, we, we we discussed he's this. been he's been waiting since since floyd threatened mm-hmm. tank to put him with, in with lomachenko with, with that, four or five with years that, ago with that win over instagram he is mm-hmm. going to be a negotiation nightmare. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. So, Lomachenko might be like 46 by the time they say, yeah, we'll do it now. You know. <laughs> nah. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it at 142 and a half. Right. Well, he's not close they could fight. To... They could fight as a, a, a exhibition in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. not He's not yet close to qualifying for AARP like an Arizona like, Lara. Like Lara, is. yeah. So, so they're not... Now, I don't see them fighting, but I, I would am, think. Let me let me say this: If I am Shanko, though, I will go ahead and leave the Shakur Stevenson fight off the table. You yeah. you retire undisputed, get your Lennox Lewis shit on, and get out of it straight mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Do whatever you got to do, but right off into the sunset, and that's it. Because it's gonna be a point in time. If you beat him, these guys are gonna be they're gonna be too big, too young, too hungry. He should team up with his father and start training fighters. Him and his father together. There you go. Train Usyk. Train Usyk to beat Fury. That's it. That's, that's another. It. That's another can of worms. No. Yeah. I, yeah. Not, I don't. I don't want nothing to do with that Fury podcast. All right. Either. So if if he loses, where does he go? Does he hang it up? I no. It should he I, he 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 can hang it up either way. He he will probably be stubborn and. Not want to. His country is still at war. Yeah. No. He can go back and kill more Russians. Nah. You know what? Yeah. I think now check this out. If we're talking about a tank fight, depending on the way that he loses to Haney, his, that would make he, it more viable, huh? Well, it would make it easier to make, right? And then you can play the little weight manipulation game. Yeah, do it do it with, with do it with Ryan. Yeah. Do do something, but the thing is, is that I'm just I'm not saying avoid Shakur because I don't want to say avoid fighters, but if I'm Lomachenko, it will really either way it goes, he can hang it up. He can hang it up. And I will I will respect him the same. I will respect him the same. Right, what, what, what what does Haney do after let's say he wins? 140. Move up. Drop the belt to move up. There's no sense in and the thing is is that And then I, Shakur is taking them all right after. Well Shakur, you know what Shakur is gonna have to do? I think Shakur's a big kid. He's actually not small. He, he won't, he's, he won't he's be a, there long. He'll be at 146. He, that's what I'm thinking. I think he's going to go up, and these fighters at 135 are going to duck him enough, and he's going to have to just move up to 140 in order to get fights. Yeah, I'm but really, if the belts are dropped, and he's, you know, he's in those um, those ranking systems. Right. He's going to have to. He's going to be near the top to be, you know, for a title eliminator or something. He'll be right there. Bob will throw him in there to build him into into a name. So he will. I think Bob will throw him in there to catch those belts, to gather those belts. Maybe not all of them, but maybe he'll get a few and then get ducked and say screw and this and move up and be gone. That's it. And then maybe Bob, by the time Bob maybe by the time like, he goes up there, Haney can go go keep the belts warm and take Josh Taylor out, and then Shakur yeah. can come up and take it from Haney. I Bob, honestly don't think Bob likes the undisputed fighters. He likes to yeah. have an undisputed fighter in his in his uh, roster. Um, right. He tried to do it with uh, Ramirez. Um, didn't work out, but no. I'll tell you with Dev though, if he if he moves up, those waters at one forty are pretty choppy. Also, it's not like it's easy. It's not smooth sailing. Up there. Those are some choppy waters, man. So he, those are big he, he, he can go up there and beat up Tiafimo after Josh Taylor beats him. Let's say Dev loses this fight for which in whichever way he loses. Let's say he loses. Um how He's badly, getting, how badly does this hurt him? I think I think for what would happen is mo- most likely, I don't think Lomachenko will walk away either way. He probably should either way. But if he beats Haney, there's gonna be a rematch. Mm. But if Haney beats Lomachenko the way we think he could, then maybe he does what Corling says and he walks away. He he goes up to 140. Or, may, or or maybe or maybe Bob walks him away because Bob has done that before with right. fighters that are that are have lost in in fights like this and they're getting a, up to that age. Then he'll stop promoting them and mm. and move on to the next one. So. Yeah, yeah. 
That's it. Well, it's going to be an interesting fight. I really, really hope this is a good fight. I think it's going to... I, I'm getting that sense from this fight. That this is going to be high high level fight this 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 fight's for us it's not for all those this is this is not tank versus this isn't garcia Instagram followers and no. those people this is for us we deserve this i'm excited you, about this fight this. yeah you i'm excited you and i don't and, and i don't have to get up at three in the morning to watch yeah, it. Not, yet. Not, not yet not yet i'll have to do that for the lopez fight i'm gonna i'm gonna call you from the garden from the lopez fight are you gonna go just to wake you up uh yeah, I I I think I don't know if they're gonna go. I mean, I gotta see my boy Xander again. You know, I gotta see my. What's boy. the What's the Ciofimo fight? It's on a uh, June tenth. June tenth. I, I was talking to Alberto, and he was thinking about going up with a buddy of him, uh, the same guy we went last time, uh, uh to uh, to Vegas. Um, so if he decides to go, I'll I'll let you know, and you guys can meet up or something. <laughs> Y'all got to keep me updated on that one. Because I'm will. not babysitting him. No, 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 no. You don't have to babysit him. <laughs> no, no, no. He's on his own. But if if he goes to the fight, to the venue, you guys can catch up or something. I'll be I'll be at a track meet. So not even going to see it. Record. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely watch Lopez versus Taylor. I think it's going to be a good fight. But I think that we've seen the best of Lopez in that fight. But that's another story. And that's another episode. And so for now, we are going to say goodbye. We all have Devin Haney to win in this fight. We all expect it to be a great fight. We're all, we're all happy that this is a good fight. And I just wanted to say, if I can get this on there, that this is... Can't even see it, damn it. This, this is, is empty. There it <laughs> this is. This is empty. <laughs> This yeah. is Sparta. Who? Uh, who? Let's see. Let's where's see. Where's Corling in there? Let me see. If oh I can yeah, he's still, he's still waiting on standby. He, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's in there somewhere. Uh, Adios. So, have a great afternoon, guys. Y'all be easy. Cheers. <laughs>